everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be going through a few new products that I picked up recently. These have been kind of something that I've enjoyed doing recently because I haven't been uploading as much because the holidays are kicking my butt. Uh, so as I'm picking up things, it's just easier to kind of, you know, take a few of the products and kind of combine them into one video. So the first new product I'm excited to talk about is this new holiday brush set from Sonia G. So this is the new limited edition Kayaki set. These brushes are handmade in Kumano. The handles are made of the Kayaki Selkova Serata, which is a wood native from Japan, which I probably just botched all of that and I apologize because I can't pronounce English words, let alone words from another language. <laughs> this is the story of my life, y'all. So these are uh, five brushes of this short handle set and these will retail for $125 for all five of them. And they will be on sale today, December 9th, on the Beautylish website at 10 a.m. PST. So if you guys are interested, I kind of have a feeling these brushes will sell out. Later on in the video, I'm going to show you guys some images of these brushes compared to some of the other brushes that I have in my collection. So you guys can see uh, images and stuff. These handles are... Uh, a little bit shorter than her regular handles. This is the mini booster. This is from the Sky Eye set. This is the mini booster in this new Kiyaki set. But as you can see, the tip on them is pretty similar. Uh, you know, this one has been washed several times. I just washed this one last night. So it takes a minute for it to kind of fully, you know, come to its shape. But you can see the difference in the size of the handle on the tip. So there's the size difference. So they're a little bit shorter than her regular brushes. However, they're very easy to use and you're pretty much getting the same benefits of the tip and they fit in the hand perfectly. They really do. Even though they're a little smaller, I think they fit just fine. I wasn't expecting them to be that small when I got them. I was like, oh, these are so small, but they're so stinking cute. I really, really like these. So some will ask, if you have the mini booster, do you need this brush? Well, let me share some differences. Uh, number one, you could have just a backup because this mini booster is fantastic. It blends out those hard to reach areas like a dream. But as you notice in this new set, this is the undyed goat hair and this is the dyed goat hair. So you're gonna have a difference of experience with undyed versus dyed because you can use this with a cream shadow. Yes, you can use the the dyed goat hair to blend out cream shadows. However, I prefer using the undyed. I feel like I get a better result. And I'm gonna be using this brush a lot because recently I bought this. This is the NARS Tinted Smudge Proof Eyeshadow Base. And Dash always talks about this, so I decided to grab it. So what I like about this product is that not only is it an eye base that you can go over top of with like a matte shadow, or you can just use this on its own. So you could use this brush to blend out a cream product. For example, uh, my Eyes to Mesmerize, which is from Charlotte Tilbury. I love, you guys know I love my Eyes to Mesmerize. So using a undyed goat hair to blend out products like this works a lot better than using dyed goat hair. So the other one that is similar to what we already have is the flat definer. So this is the flat definer from the uh, Sky Eye Set, right? So you can see the tips are exactly the same. The only difference is the new one, which is this white one, uh, is white in its, you know, undyed goat hair. And you can see that the tips on these, it's just a little bit shorter. Now, again, this will be a brush that I can use and get a better result applying a cream eyeshadow or a liquid eyeshadow. She's also launching a new brush holder, which I am definitely getting, okay? This is bigger than the one I already have. It retails for $190. And the one I have is this one, and I love this. I absolutely love this. I want it to be bigger. So when she said she was launching something bigger, I was all over it. Yes, this is a very expensive brush holder, but these are handmade. These are made from walnut wood, which walnut is very expensive wood. They are handcrafted. I mean, you just, for me, 
I love these. These are not a necessity, but this is going to be my Christmas present. So what I'm deciding is to, I'm going to use this one for my eye brushes and I'm going to use the big one for my face brushes. And I think the birds and everything, the scenery on it, I am so excited about this. I have my alarm set ready to go. That's what we're doing in today's video. Without further ado, let's go ahead and jump into all of the applications of me trying out all these new products. And then we will jump into the swatches. Then I will come back later on this evening and share my final thoughts on everything. So I will see you guys then. The first product we're gonna jump into is the By Terry palette that she just launched. This is what it looks like. It did come with a little brush. Uh, so this is what it looks like up close. Now, I've actually personally never used a By Terry palette. So this is my first experience with a By, By Terry palette. And this is the number three Paris Mon Amour. Probably botched that, but you know, this is the VIP Expert palette. I love the embossings. I think that's what makes her palettes so pretty is the embossings on them. Uh, but these shades right here look very, very pretty. But these two shades right here look very similar. This one has a pink tone. This one has more of a cream tone. But I really don't think there was a need for two of them in this little, you know, 10 pen palette. Not a lot of pigment and they're kind of the same color. So I kind of feel like that's a waste. So as I spoke in the intro, I'm also going to be using the new holiday brush set from Sonia G. Uh, she sent these to me in PR and I'm very, very grateful, but I'm going to take the jumbo blender and I'm going to go into this first shade right here and I'm going to take that and put it right on the brow bone. So I'm just going to kind of use that shade to kind of brighten up the inner corner and also highlight around the brow bone. Even though there wasn't a lot of pigment when I swatched it, it definitely made a difference. You can see that it kind of brightened things up. So the only thing that I have on right now is foundation and my brows done. Um, I'm going to be testing out a new powder. So I wanted to use a foundation that I know and love, which is the Tom Ford stick foundation. This is one of my favorites. I'm looking very extra shiny on camera, but I need some face powder. So my skin reflects off the lights without face powder. So I will be applying that soon. All right, let's go ahead and jump into some shades. So I'm going to take the mini booster in the new uh, holiday set. So I'm going to grab this shade right up here, the second one in the palette. I'm just going to place that right out here on the outer corner, kind of build up the crease. I'm just going to take the jumbo blender and kind of cart, like blend out some of these edges. I'm going to pick that shade back up with the mini booster and bring it here on the outer corner. This is a pretty shade. Uh, it's definitely prettier on the eye than I thought it was going to be in the pan. I'm going to switch to a smaller brush. This is actually the Nabla N303. And I want to go into this dark matte brown here on the corner right here and kind of carve out my outer corner. Then I'm going to go back to the mini booster and just blend that out. These shadows, you know, like I said, I've never used a By Terry palette and these shadows are blending really beautifully. And I like the shimmer. It's a very soft shimmer. It's one of those shimmers that is very flattering in the crease. I'm gonna switch colors and I wanna add a little bit of this red to this outer corner. Lightly tap some of that right here on this outer corner. And just kind of doing circular motions to kind of blend it into what's on there. I, I've gotta do a little bit more blending, but for now I'm gonna leave it. But I could do like this color, this color, or this color. Like all three of these colors would go with what I'm wearing. But I'm thinking about grabbing this pink shade right in the middle. I think that pink is very pretty. So I'm going to take the flat definer brush. I'm going to put it on dry. I might need to put this one on wet. We'll see. Okay, I'm going to use my finger first. And then I'll use the flat definer to correct any mistakes. 
I'm going to use the flat definer to bring that shade right into this inner corner, like right there, and really open up that eye. And then I'll take the Jumbo Blender to kind of blend it out. Then I'm going to take the Mini Booster and I'm going to grab this shade right here. I want to see what that will look like right here in this area. Bring that like right here. By the way, I got a little bit of fallout from the dark shades, but not a lot. We're going to get into the details about the new concealer. So I don't know how long this has been out. This is my first time trying this. This is the Clinique Even Better All Over Concealer Plus Eraser. So this is what it looks like. It has a little eraser on the end. You'd have to get this wet, I think, in order for this to work just because it is a sponge and I think it, it won't really benefit you if it's not wet because it'll just pick up whatever you put down. So they're both warm neutrals. So this is the 38 stone. It's, I think it's going to be a little too light. Might be good for brightening, but I don't know that it's going to be good for concealing for me. And then this one right here is the 46 golden neutral. So I'm definitely going to be applying the 46 golden neutral. I like to apply my concealer is to blend it out with a brush and then uh, kind of press it into the skin with a sponge. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to kind of pull it down where I want the coverage. Then I'm just going to take the sponge and kind of press it in. That's, that's a pretty concealer. It's very natural, very natural. And it goes over the wrinkles really nicely. Um, you know, these are more of my like wrinkled areas and uh, I don't feel like it like sinks into the fine lines, but it does dry pretty quickly. So I'm curious how it will work throughout the day. So far, I really like the way that this looks. And it's uh, very undetectable underneath the eyes. So now that we have that done, let's go ahead and finish the lower lash line. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab this shade right here and we're gonna put that on the lower lash line. Okay, I love that shade. That shade is so pretty. It's so soft on the wrinkles that it doesn't exaggerate them in any way. I'm gonna take my flat definer brush. Let's go into this matte brown right here. We're gonna just softly kind of smoke that into the outer corner. And then I'm just gonna take the brush that I used with no extra product and just go over that and kind of blend those together. Let's do the exact same thing on the upper lash line. So I'm gonna grab this matte brown right here, focus that right here on this outer corner. You know what this palette reminds me of? It reminds me of a, I gotta blend this out. It reminds me of a Tom Ford palette. Like when I use a Tom Ford palette, this is kind of the result that I get. There's not really a, a color that I could use for an inner corner. Maybe let's try putting this matte white that has like a pink base on the inner corner to kind of brighten it up. Yeah, one of those shades needs a shimmer, but that what that brightened it up. So, you know, taking that shade and putting it here on the inner corner, it brightened up the eye. While I was on the website, I went ahead and picked up her uh, waterproof coal eyeliner pencils. I'm still on the hunt to try to find the best upper lash line eyeliner. So far, my favorite is the Pat McGrath eyeliner. This one I got in the shade Brown Secret and every, it comes with a little pencil sharpener. So does the Pat McGrath. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this on the upper waterline. I always use a, I always take an eyeliner and put it on my upper lash line, always. It will really thicken up your lashes. So far, it's not really transferring on the lower waterline, which is always an issue when I'm doing 
uh, you know, eyelid pencils. This one didn't seem to do that like some of the others that I have. Okay, so I went ahead and threw on some mascara. Now that we got the eyes done, let's move on to the face. So this little brush comes in the holiday set and this is called the mini base brush. Now, when I first got the set, I was like, okay, what am I actually gonna use this for? So I was Marco Poloing with my friend Teresa from Teresa's Dead, and which we Marco Polo constantly. I, I, I get, I ramble on Marco. Like, I don't know how she puts up with me. Anyway, not the point. So she was like, Tara, that brush would be perfect for cream bronzer, cream contour, cream blush. And I was like, holy crap, you're so right. Now this is a mixture between dyed and undyed goat hair. So you can use this with cream or powder products. So I'm gonna dip into the Tom Ford uh, Shade and Illuminate uh, Intensity 2. And I use this pretty much every day. So I'm gonna grab it and stick it like right here along the contours of the cheek. Um, come through. This works so good for cream contour. This is amazing. Like this works so good. So I am gonna try it with some cream blush. I'm gonna grab the By Terry one. This is the Brightening CC blush. It only comes in one shade, I think. I'm gonna grab this. I just put a tiny little dot. Then I'm just going to go over it with my sponge to kind of push it into the skin. So I can tell you this brush is perfect for cream contour. It's perfect for like cream blushes. It applied it very evenly and I'm not seeing any stippling marks or anything like that. Okay, let's move on to the powder that I picked up. I have officially bought the most expensive powder I've ever bought. I've heard so many people love this powder. Uh, but Mel swears by this powder. This is the Sicily. Uh, but I actually picked this up in the shade number two. So the top part opens up and you have a mirror and then you have a little powder puff right here. And then right here is where the powder is. So you just peel off the sticker. I normally use the Hourglass, uh, which is the translucent setting powder from Hourglass. So I'm gonna use this brush, which is my favorite powder brush. Because I'm testing out a new powder, I kind of wanna use the same brushes that I normally always use. So I'm gonna use the Master Face, and it is clean, because I cleaned all my brushes last night. So I'm gonna kinda swirl it around. Okay, so that's some pretty powder, you guys. Very, very soft, soft powder. Now, I am one of the rare people that don't really like the uh, By Terry Hyaluronic uh, Tinted or Translucent Setting Powder. It's just a little bit too finely milled for me, uh, and it's just not my favorite. I'm curious about this because this just softened everything up, but it did not exaggerate any wrinkles. So I'm gonna grab this brush, which is from the Sonia G uh, set. This is the classic face. And this is just a little bit smaller of a brush for me to reach those like hard to reach areas, like right between my brows and right above my brows. And I'm gonna bring that all along here. It's gonna take me loving this powder to replace my hourglass powder because I absolutely love it. All right, I'm gonna grab my Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finishing Powder. I recently bought the shade number one, which is Fair, to kind of place right here in this area and it just kind of brightens things up. So I'm gonna use this brush from the Sonia G collection. This is the classic face brush. And as you guys know, I love the soft cheek brush to do this with and I'm just curious how this brush compares to that. The soft cheek is a little bit more like direct and just a little bit more lightweight. This one is packs it on a little bit heavier, if you will, because it's it's thicker and bigger. Uh, you can see the difference in the, sh in the shape and the size and stuff. This is the mini cheek and this is the new one. So you can kind of see the difference in the size of these. And I feel like the bigger brush right here really packs it on. Okay, so let's go ahead and move on to lips. So as 
many of you guys probably know, I don't know if all of you know, but maybe some of you guys know, I am a huge fan of Real Housewives of Every City. Yes, I watch Every City. Issa Rena, who I grew up watching for years, I loved watching Days of Our Lives with her as the character Billy. She started her own brand. It's called Rena Beauty. You get the package, it comes wrapped up in this tissue paper and I got some goodies. You also, if you buy the kit, you also get this little carrying pouch, which is perfect for my purse. So I will be using that. I got two different kits and then I think I got a gloss separate. Yeah, I got a lip gloss separate and a lipstick separate, but I got two sets. So we're gonna open them all up and we're gonna play. I'm excited. I just gotta make sure that I didn't buy two of the same thing. I did. Okay, so it looks like this lip kit, which is no apologies, comes with the shade Guilty Pleasure. So I might have to throw Guilty Pleasure in a giveaway. So this is the lip kit. Uh, it comes with a lip liner, a lipstick, and a lip gloss, okay? This is the No Apologies lip kit, which comes with Pucker Up Bitch, Guilty Pleasure, and Notice Me. These are the swatches for the No Apologies kit. As you can see, this is Pucker Up Bitch, this is uh, Notice Me in the lipstick, and this is Guilty Pleasures in the lip gloss. The outside packaging is all like gray, uh, with like a dark gray writing. As you can see, it says Rena Beauty right there. So I wanna also show you that the lids on the lipstick casings are magnetized, so they clip right on, and I really like the casing on these. They're very heavy duty, very luxurious, and I do like the lipstick casing. She did a great job on the packaging. So let's try on the lip liner first. Ooh, and it has a very strong cray crayon scent, like extremely strong. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. I hope the lipsticks don't smell like this. This is strong. This is what the tip looks like, and it's retractable. As you can see, I just kind of roll it up and roll it down. It's a really pretty color. It's a little bit more of a warmer undertone and it's not bad. It's not bad. These are the three shades that I got in the lipstick. Sorry for the terrible swatches. This one is Rose All Day, this first one. The one in the middle is Troublemaker. This one right here is Troublemaker. And then the one on the other side is Pucker Up Bitch. So this is Pucker Up Bitch. So let's start out with Rose All Day. But that shade is a little bit too light for me to wear without a lip liner. Um, it's just, it, it's pretty though. It is pretty. It's just, it needs a lip liner. It does kind of have a crayon scent to it, but not as bad as the lip liners. The lip liners are terrible. I'm just going to say that. Ooh. Then we have Troublemaker. And let's try Troublemaker on. Okay, so I will say these are very, very creamy. And it's almost like I need a lip liner to kind of stop them from kind of bleeding because they are creamy. This shade Troublemaker is very pretty, but I definitely need a lip liner with it for me personally. Final shade I have is Pucker Up Bitch. So let's put that on. This is probably my favorite color of the three. It's a little bit brighter of a pink and I could wear it without a lip liner. However, if you're lighter skin tone than I am, you could totally wear these without a lip liner. But this is a very pretty color too. So the two shades that I got in the lip gloss is Dancing Queen and Guilty Pleasure. So this is Guilty Pleasure and this is Dancing Queen. There's really not a lot of differences between those two shades. This one is a little teeny bit more of a pink shade. This is a little bit more peachy. You can see it when it's not reflecting off the light. You can kind of see the undertone, but they're very similar. So let's first put on the shade Dancing Queen. This is a very pretty color. And I don't mind this. Uh, it, it's pretty, it's got some opacity to it. It's not Lisa Eldridge opacity, okay? Like her glosses, they're opacity. Like you get a lot of color. These I would say is probably a medium coverage situation and I don't mind this. 
uh, this is a very pretty color. So the lip gloss is not flavored at all. So it doesn't have like vanilla or anything like that. You really can't taste anything with them on your lips, which, which I don't mind. Final shade we have is Guilty Pleasure. There's really not a lot of differences between these. I would say this one has more of a pink undertone. The other one's a little bit, a little tiny bit on the peachy side. Um, mm, they, they're probably going to look the same on anybody that has a skin tone similar to mine. If you're lighter than me, you'll probably notice the differences between the colors. Let's start with the Legends Only Lip Kit, and we're going to layer that, which has the Notice Me Lip Liner, the Dancing Queen Lip Gloss, and the Rosé All Day Lipstick. So let's go ahead and try on the No Apologies Lip Kit, which is the Pucker Up Bitch Lipstick, Guilty Pleasure Lip Gloss, and Notice Me Lip Liner. Honestly, there's not a lot of differences between these two kits. Because I think the lip liner is the same shade, and the lipsticks are so close together that there's not a lot of differences between them. I don't know. I kind of feel like I'm putting on the same colors over and over and over. I don't know if you guys are getting that, but I'm not seeing like a lot of differences between them. Um, okay, let's put on Guilty Pleasure lip gloss over top. So those are the products that I picked up from the Rena Beauty line. That's it for the try on portion of the video. Let's go ahead and jump into the swatches of all the products that I used in today's video. So let's go ahead and jump into the swatches and then I will see you guys later on this evening for my final thoughts. Okay, so I wanted to come back on camera. It's been about two hours since I went off camera. I wanted to show you guys that my lipstick is pretty much gone and the lip liner is pretty much gone. You can see the line right up here. I haven't touched it. My lips are dry. I need something on them, but I haven't put anything on them. I think it's safe to say that these lipsticks, lip liners, lip glosses don't last as long as some of the others that I have in my collection. I don't know. They just don't. Just wanted to pop here on camera really quick show you guys, and then I will give you the full update later on this evening in my final thoughts. So I will see you guys then. Okay, everyone, let me go ahead and get into my final thoughts. It is currently 12 o'clock in the morning. So I've had this makeup on for about 10 hours, which isn't the best. Like, I would prefer 12, but I just, I've got to get this video done so I can go to bed. Let me go ahead and get into my thoughts. I'm going to first start with the palette. Love this palette. Love it. It is beautiful. And as you saw in the swatches, it looks very similar to the first frost palette from Tom Ford and the body heat, which was very surprising when you saw, you know, the swatches and the comparison side by side. I think this is a really good palette and I love the way that the shimmers really blend into the crease and they work into the crease so similar to the Tom Ford. They look very effortless and they're not too shimmery, but they're shimmery enough to just be so beautiful. But they don't emphasize the texture and the wrinkles. 
this is a great palette. I'm actually excited to try the other palette uh, that she's had on, you know, that's kind of similar to this, but this is really pretty. I did ruin some of my embossings from swatching it, but it was worth it. I'm so glad I got this palette. I am so glad, but I will say the wet dry formula from Tom Ford is very unique and it applies very uniquely. It just like, I really don't have anything like the formula in my collection, but with that said, this is beautiful. It really is. And I think what the similarities are for me is the way that they apply in the crease and the way that the shimmers kind of blend in the crease and look very beautiful. It just, it gave me the Tom Ford feeling. When I get done using a Tom Ford palette, this is kind of the similar eye look that I will have. And I'm very, very impressed with this uh, by Terry palette. And I'm very excited to continue to play with it. The brushes, I think you guys already know, I think this is a great brush set, fantastic brush set. And if you guys are considering picking it up, I don't think you'll regret it. Even though the handles are smaller, I just think they're so adorable. And I'm kind of obsessed with that part about it, which I was a little bit surprised when I seen that they were smaller, but that's now my favorite part. Uh, but I just think these are a great brush collection and Thank you, Sonia, for sending these to me because they're absolutely beautiful. Let me get into the concealer. So the concealer, I am feeling like my under eyes are a little dry. So this for me is a little bit more of a drying formula. And I just don't think this is a formula that I can wear during the winter. Right now I'm more dry than I normally am. It's because you have, you know, it's colder outside. Plus you have the heat on in the house and it just dries everything out. I live in Utah, which is dry. So this is an up close, uh, you know, you can see it looks just a little bit creepy. You know how it kind of starts to separate. It's looking really dry and it feels really dry. This is not a very hydrating concealer. It says that it's a full coverage. I would not call this a full coverage. I would say it's a probably decent medium. If you're not dry, like if you don't have dry under eyes like I do, I do think this is a pretty concealer, but I just don't think it's going to work for those who have dry under eyes. I think you're going to probably need uh, combination or oily skin, I think you would really enjoy this because it does kind of dry and set down. Sometimes with concealers, it's hard just to wear them for one day and say they're good or they're not good. I'll continue to play with it and I will give you guys an update. Uh, but for now, I don't really think it's dry skin friendly. The powder, I actually really like the powder. I really didn't want to like the powder, but I really like the powder. I'm going to continue to wear it, of course. I've only worn it one day with one foundation. I need a powder that's going to work with all of my foundations, not just one. So, of course, I will continue to wear it with other foundations and see how it performs. But based on just using it today, I understand the hype behind this. I see why people like this. It's finely milled, but it's not dry looking. So that's what happens when I apply the By Terry Hydra powder. So it's supposed to have some kind of like hydration in the powder, but it actually makes me look more dry throughout the day when I wear the Hydra powders from By Terry. This one is finely milled. I would say more finely milled than the Hourglass, but it doesn't make me feel dry. Like my skin does not feel dry. And I really feel like it held my foundation very well. This actually held the oils, but did not dry my skin out. So it's kind of impressing me today, but again, I'm going to continue to use it and I will definitely update you in future videos, but so far I really like it. I didn't want to though. I really didn't want to. Okay, let's talk about the By Terry eyeliner. So this is the one that I don't like. Uh, so my eyeliner on my upper eyelids are gone. I don't know if this is going to gross you out. I'm going to totally do this. So if this grosses you out, I, you know, just fast forward this part, but you can see that I'm kind of missing my eyeliner. The only thing I have on is mascara. This is not waterproof and it did not last, which is kind of a bummer because it's kind of expensive. I think this was like $30. So that's a no-go for me. Let me get into my thoughts about Rena Beauty. Uh, it's a no-go for me. There's several reasons why I say that. Uh, number one, the glosses are just too similar. The lipsticks are too similar. The only thing that's different about them is a certain level of undertone. This is for me and my skin tone personally. But my biggest complaint is the longevity did not last. So when I come back on camera after being away for two hours, I was, I had nothing on, right? Well, then 
I reapplied and an hour later I was timing it. I just, you know, put the timer on my phone and just kind of continued with my day doing some things. And I would consistently kind of look in the mirror and see an hour later they were completely gone. A lot of lipsticks don't last a really long time, but an hour or two later, you're still going to have some color left. Like I get that from, you know, Charlotte Tilbury. I get that from Tom Ford. I get that from Becca. Love Becca's lipsticks. There's a lot of great lipsticks out on the market that will last longer than an hour. And I just did not get that with this. So I think these are a pass for me. I don't know that they're worth it. I'm not a big fan of the lip liner because I just don't like the way it smells. The smell is atrocious. It's so strong. I don't have the best sense of smell. Do not have the best sense of smell. And I'm from here away, I can smell it from here away. It's strong. It's a very strong, like just strong, potent crayon scent. And I just am not living for that. So those are my thoughts on everything that I used in today's video. Sound off down below. Let us know if you guys have used anything that I used in today's video and what you think about it. Because your, your guys' opinion is just as important as anyone else's. So definitely sound off down in the comment section. I love you all so, so much. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day and I will see you all in my next video. Love you. Bye.